Hi folks and welcome back. On screen are the tools and materials I use to create the space. Let's get started. Print the pattern at actual size and trace to your foam. Cut and separate each piece by colour. Each piece is labelled with the first letter of its colour and bevel type. I keep each colour family in their own plastic tub so I don't get them mixed up before they are assembled. What captions you see on screen are abbreviations of what is in the PDF instructions, so extra tips or information I have, I will say in this voiceover. The yellow section forms the brow and upper muzzle area. Once assembled, put to the side to let the glue dry fully. This is how it should look. The orange and red sections form the back of the base and the lower jaw. If you wish you can pre-cut the mouth opening in the red section at this stage or leave it till later like I do on this base. The circle indicates where the jaw opening will be cut later. If your glue has a shorter working time, or you need more time to apply it, glue the long seams in two stages. My contact adhesive has a slightly longer time, so by the time I finish all seams, the first is ready to attach. Lightly press the seams first, before doing it firmly. This lets you adjust each piece before locking it in place. You will need to ease some areas to meet the notches. This is on purpose because of the transition of the jaw to the back of the base on the curve. Here I join the top centre seam only. The lower jaw seam will be glued later. Put this to the side for now. The green section forms a large portion of the head from the muzzle to the top of the head. First, take only the pieces with a star marked on them. You can see I missed one here by accident. Let these dry fully and move on to the rest of the green components. These pieces are straightforward. Arrange as shown and glue each section according to the PDF. Put to the side for now. Cut the dotted line as a bevel and cut the other side flat. Glue back together. I chose to assemble this way so there were less tiny pieces to keep track of. Breaking it down this way makes it easier for me to manage. You can see the curves start to take shape here. Now we can finish the green section. all colour components are assembled and we can move on to final assembly. Apply glue to the seams shown in the PDF from circle to circle. Mm -hmm. 
It's here you can see things come together as a base. Now that the base is glued, it's time to customise. Cut mouth out, add ears, nose, etc. When cutting out the eyes, you will likely need to cut into the nose bridge too. Remember, eyelids go over the top too, so that will affect the final look as well. The PDF includes full instructions for creating eyes from blanks to fully finished and painted eyes. You will need to cut off the overhang on the eyes. Save these pieces. We will glue these to the inside of the base so the eye has a larger surface area to glue to. There are two types of eyelids to choose from, or you can create your own using the template as a starting point. You will need to thin the edges of these before gluing to the base or fur, so there is a smooth transition between the eye and the eyelid. I glue my eyes to the fur so I'm only pinning here. It's at this stage I usually pattern the fur with tape. Not everyone does it this way, you can do this before or after the base is fur ready. Don't forget to glue the chin stop. This will stabilise the lower jaw and stop your chin falling into the mask when worn. The 2D ears are the simplest to make. Carving the edges will give you the illusion of dimension. The base of these ears are flat so there isn't room to hide an ear vent, however they are more stylized and they can have a big visual impact. These ones are made using half inch upholstery foam. Thank you. 
This is how they look after being done and on the base. The first notch after the centre line is the recommended starting position for the ears. The 3D ears are a little more complicated. The base of these are curved so there is room to hide near vent nicely and you don't need to carve in the illusion of dimension into them as it's already worked into the pattern. They are typically used for realistic or semi-realistic styles, however they are very popular overall. This is the style I use most often. Here I use Eva foam as the cartilage and half inch upholstery foam as the ear body. I sometimes use 300 GSM foss shape and forgo the cartilage, but that's a more advanced technique I'll cover at a later date. Curving the outer edge of the Eva here takes off the sharpness and makes these easier to tape for your fur pattern. This is how the final 3D ear looks. They attach in the same location as the 2D ears and the ear body hangs off the back of the base like so. If you choose to do vents, this gap will become the vent. Draw this onto the taped pattern and attach the ears to the hood when it comes time to fur the head. The hood and ears are then sewn to the face fur. This is how I do it personally, but there is no wrong way to do so. The last piece this PDF tutorial covers is the nose. There is five styles to choose from and two sets of assembly instructions included. On screen you can see the fabric versus UV resin. I prefer UV resin usually. Like with other parts, I attach this to the fur during furring. On screen now are some finished examples of the base with both ear and eyelid types. I'm currently working on a furred example which should be available to buy soon. If you would like to give this base a go, you can find my PDF pattern available in my Etsy shop linked below. If you do, please use the hashtag MadeWithRispars. I'd love to see what you make. Please be aware, this is a digital PDF pattern. There are no physical materials supplied and you must purchase these separately at your own discretion. I've added a very helpful link to fursuitmaterials.com where you can find a database for materials from all over the world. I hope you guys found this helpful and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.